And so we are going to start with Randy Axelrod. And Randy, just before you start, I just want to say one piece of housekeeping, Harold, I was just on an email, which is why I was a little late today to the 945, with Simcha Weintraub, who is the author of the book, or the editor of the book about the 10, uh, uh, and he's been very, he's going to come to class, but it looks like he's moving, so it'll be in April, so we're going to dedicate a class, even though it'll be where he's going to come and talk about editing this book and the process of selecting the Bratislav 10 Psalms. So we'll look forward to that. I think it'll be, it'll be wonderful. Should, should we get the book beforehand and read through you it? You know, if, I don't think it's still in print, but some people, and uh, yeah, don't pay a lot of money for it. It's a small paperback. It's in um, print. I, I just got it. Oh, it is in print? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got it on Amazon in two days. So did I. Yeah. So if you could get it for reasonable, if it is, so that's fantastic because it'll be a wonderful addition to your Psalm collection. And it's not till April that he can come. He's moving. So there's a lot of different things. But anyway, I'll let you know the exact date. We're working on it. Thank you. And we'll put that in on the Facebook page and in chat. Um, are we ready, Rabbi? Are we ready to be wowed? Randy Axelrod, would you like to unmute yourself? Are you here? Um Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Okay, good. Um, okay, this is um, a sin cane on Psalm 17. Droplets of sparkling ice permeating my mask. Cleansing snow awakens senses in me. At night, droplets of fear. Keen eyes, long fingers probe. A whispered scream through muzzled lips. Help me. Awake. My eyes behold your radiant presence. Your judgment. I am innocent. Love me. Wow. And I just love the use of the word droplets in the middle of our, uh, <laughs> in the middle of our historic moment. That's a fantastic example of something that any one of us would recognize but in a different historical time, somebody reading this uh, might not respond with quite the same way. <laughs> Perfect example. So Randy, talk to us, tell us about writing this. Well, um, I work with immigrants as a volunteer tutor in wow. English conversation. Uh -huh. And my, my newest- Wonderful. Yeah, it's, I love it. And my newest student came in with a poem that he had written in English called A Sin Cane which I had never heard of. And this particular um, style of it is five lines and the syllables go from two, four, six, eight, two. So he read me his poem. Wow. Yeah, and I was intrigued. And uh -huh. um, I said, well, I'm gonna try I've to- I've never heard it. of it either. Yeah, so I did um, the first, um, you know, five lines really have nothing to do with the song per se. I was watching the snowfall, but I was trying to get a sense of being awake and alive. Uh -huh. And the second stanza was the one that I had the most trouble with reading the psalm and writing it because it really uh -huh. creeped me out. You know, uh -huh. all that probing in yeah. the night. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and, um, the last paragraph, you know, again, reflects the psalm. I'm, I'm not talking about a divine presence. I'm talking about someone, I think human, but maybe with a divine spark. And I, I had trouble with the last line. I didn't know how to end it. And then I just thought that you put me through hell during the night. So it's kind of a demand, like, love me after all that. So that's it. <laughs> Beautiful. And I think that's such a powerful, the, that middle, that feels like that fulcrum paragraph or stanza of the, which is very reflective of, uh, and very classic particular Psalm structure, where there's something in the beginning and something at the end. And in the middle, we find terror, fear, sadness, despair, you know, those kinds of difficult, painful feelings. And there's a resolution at the end 
uh, by demanding the, this, the love, which is fantastic. And to have the contrast between help me and then love me, that sometimes that's the strongest form of help, right? Is, is feeling loved. That yes. We, what we actually need in the universe isn't for yes. our problems to be fixed sometimes. It's not necessarily for something or someone to wave a magic wand and make it all change. Sometimes all we need is to feel seen and loved, and then we can keep going. Exactly. Beautiful, Randy. Thank you. You all know, right. somebody is just doing my buzzer at the door. I apologize. Randy's not here today, so I just got to go check. Go, go, go. I'll be right back. Could be Elijah. So I'm going to put up Dean's, which are the next thing we're going to be discussing. So we can all admire this. Yes. Um, it's fun to, well, I don't know, admire. I think it's fun to share with you the challenges, so. Okay, uh, you can start talking. So I wanted to show this just so you could see it. I felt like the psalm really broke between the first nine stanzas and I followed pretty closely Levy. Um, so in the first nine stanzas, you know, there's this really, you know, here on my face and, you know, I'm innocent. So those are the whole matches. You can see them kind of lined up as a preliminary on this. This is a preliminary. So you can see how I can start a composition working the psalm. And then, um, you know, the other side was, you know, their farty parts are, you know, shut in, so on. So that's going to be the forces. So I just wanted to show that so you guys could see it. So there is a, another, hold on. There's another image here that you get. Th this was. That's the image. This is the yeah. uh, finished okay. Psalm 17. Wow. Every time I see another one of these, I can't wait until they're displayed in the sanctuary in 30th Street and we can everybody can see them in person. Yeah, and keep you know. white wine and have some pretzel sticks. <laughs> you can yeah. smell them together. Yeah. Let's see if the rabbi came back. I'm back. Okay, so you see, this is the finished piece, and this was the in process. Wow. So you get to see it. Um, I want to say, Rabbi, is that I, I looked through all the signs, and as much as I've often responded to Bernstein, this time I really responded to Levy. Uh huh. And I so, like Levy's. I actually agree with you. I think Levy's is really good for this. Yeah. Um, and so, and I, I wanted to ask, cause, and, and I'll share with you my, because uh, I go through these stanza by stanza when I'm working up the composition. Uh -huh, I wanted uh -huh. to show that. So the earlier one to show you the fire is to kind of see how I think the thing broke apart. Be up to stanza nine, you really have a report from, you know, our speaker who is speaking, you know, through his veil of righteousness that he's really trying to ascribe to the straight and narrow. And then, um, then he shares with us this impending fear. So I wanted to see how yep. the actual process mirrors the psalm. Wow. So anyway, Love um, it. so what I wanted to show you was also was really a struggle was how their fatty parts are shut and their mouths are swollen with arrogant speech. So I wanted to take these, for lack of a better word, bad matches. Um, the, the lesser of us. Um, and you can see where their heads are swollen and they're curving and they're, they're mm -hmm. um, It also sets up uh, prey like clubs. Um, and then um, there are nine, for the stanzas, there are nine matches. There's eight footprints of the match drawn and then our speaker is at the top. So that's how they, uh... but the question I had Rabbi, which is that, and it varied in the interpretations of oh, yes. This psalm used to be very big that. differences. Yep. <laughs> um, was that I was trying to understand that stanza in 14 when he says, send your hand against this gang, this gang of brutish men, yeah. whose portion is only in this life, who bellies you stuff with your treasure. And it seemed like, you know, these are the enriched, entitled, you know, who do so much harm um, often, not always, but can. And, um, you know, I see that evident in 
you know, and some of the supporters of Trump and so on and so forth. Um, this really is the very difficult verse in the Psalm. And if you we were to synoptically compare the various translations, you'll see, because the Hebrew is not easy to understand. And so there are really different ways to go at it. And in our, my little Haruta, that's, we really struggled with this Psalm it was, was this description of who was having babies, so to speak, a positive one or a negative one? Right. And clearly Bernstein uh, uses it to talk about her own progeny. And so clearly that's positive to her and it would made some, so, but here Levy very clearly and in his comments, uh, commentary, um, uh, he's, he says there where it says the word, uh, the meme team men in the plural usually connotes a group and gang continues the pejorative tone of the previous verses. So Levy's making the judgment that this verse is an extension of the verses that came before. Yeah. And therefore he's very clearly putting these people and he goes on to say, you know, their reproductive needs are, the latter is a suggestion that the enemy's procreative self-indulgence parallels their gustatory self-indulgence. I've never used that word in my life. So that's quite a word, wow. but yes. But it but definitely goes to what you're saying, Dean, that Levy sees these these people as being caring only about material things. And one could argue the kind of people who would leave to the next generation only material uh, inheritance uh, are empty on some level. Yeah. So that's another way to read it. But yeah, yeah. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. It's, it is a very difficult verse. And Oh, open therefore for it's not really clear, but I I I go towards Levy's understanding of it. Stephen Deem. Thank you, thank you, Dean. Yes, beautiful. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Deem. Seventeen. Defila le David. Your heart, vibrant home. Your heart, vibrant home. You, hey, vav, hey. You, hey, vav, hey. Mm. Here, my heart is on my sleeve. Please open your pupil with kindness. Ye, hey, vav, hey, your heart, vibrant home. That's it. Wow, this is so creative and I love seeing the total exploration of structure and format. And uh, so talk to us. Love well, um, you know, obviously, uh, three o'clock came along yesterday, so I had to send something out. <laughs> it's Deadlines like, are useful for cr the creative. Uh... Well, Claire's my space. I say, okay, I've got the space. Uh, in my exploration, I've been, you know, doing a lot of writing, and I felt that I had to minimalize it. Uh huh. And also, I, in the process of writing it, I renounce my. Christian name Stephen because it's a prayer of David and I really wanted to get to the heart of the matter pun intended so I ended up by titling it Deem just my last name uh, because I'm not really that ready to abandon Stephen because <laughs> I'm not that way but I feel much closer to David when I'm writing a psalm because I am fulfilling the role of David mm -hmm. um, so I mean it's a meditation and I try to get to what I think um, the psalmist you know, the, the original writer was trying to get to as bringing somebody who's in a very tight situation, who's surrounded everywhere, and it doesn't seem like there's a way for the hero to get out, finally mm -hmm. does a meditation and looks to the Holy One for comfort, even though 
he has done every horrible thing in the world. So open your pupil with kindness is look at me with kindness mm -hmm. and give me supernatural power to get out of this. I, and I also really love the way you emphasize the yud hey vav hey, and I love the your, your little poetic English version of it. But it is very powerful to see it lifted out because it's meant to be seen as lifted out. When yud hey vav hey gets used, we're meant to have a response that's much bigger than the word God or Lord even does in English. And just by doing this, you're playing with that and you're playing with our reaction to it. We can't miss it. We can't overlook it and to, to have this your heart vibrant home just beautiful i really really love this okay thank you can i say one more thing sure, please and do also it. getting into it's a meditation so it's meant to be said over and over or to give yes. to somebody to help the rhythm them. is a part of it if there and the idea of a heart being that we don't own our hearts and i'm not trying to say that there's a personal divine that's actually beating every heart, but the power of the universe being the divine is our heart. And that's why it's at the center of this piece. Beautiful, beautiful, Stephen. Thank you. I like seeing David spelled that way. It also pushes us a little bit, not just to see the word David, which uh, David pushes us a little bit to see the Hebrew there. So it's a lovely way in the English to, to emphasize that. And you know, David Diggs, the great singer who was in the original cast of Hamilton, um, he's named David, not David. Uh, his mother is Jewish and very much wanted him to have the Jewish, a Hebraic form of David. So he's known as David. Uh, we may have had, Stephen, we may have had an editing issue. I put back Deem 17. Okay. Is that the title, the correct title here? It's okay. It's, it's okay. It's, 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 it's a work of art. It's always changing. Okay. <laughs> great. Indeed, and that's true, like life itself. Thank you. Larry Finkelstein. Come on. Good morning. Good morning. What? You know me. You hear me think all day and dream at night, and that's not enough? You still want to decode my mind and examine my heart as if I were a lab experiment and need to prove I'm worthy? Even though I set out to follow the right path, I couldn't be straight. Wouldn't it have been, would it have been better for me to have tried and failed than to have never tried? Do I still have to wait for your answer? Like those multitudes who waited in vain for you to save them from their destroyers as if you didn't hear us at all? I'll never be the teacher's pet but I still expect to be granted immunity. Will you guard us against your creation running rampant seeking to destroy us? Or will we succumb to the wrath of the Proud Boys attacking our similar freedom as those seeking to lead us on cower in their safe rooms? While the house is even more divided as those on the right continue to grow their troves with more money than even their grandchildren can spend, but for me, you know that I will continue as before, knowing that I do not have to be justified in order to see your face when it's my turn. Mm. I changed the end a little bit there. Beautiful. Um, Larry, speak to us. So um, when I first read it, I couldn't get past the word probe. Can we make it just a little bit larger? Harold, is that possible? Thanks. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get the, past the word probe. Mm -hmm. To me, probe brought back an episode of the Twilight Zone with you know these space creatures coming to Earth and probing our minds and bodies. Yeah, and yes, sir, in, in a way that was, vi vi it violated us. It was violated us, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't reconcile that image of probe with what was going on here, because it starts, uh, the Psalm starts off by saying, you know, God, you know me, you know, you, you know what I'm, you know, all about me. And then yet you still have to come and probe me. So I, I, I was, um, that, that I couldn't 
reconcile that. But then when we studied it in class, the first, you know, when, when you read the Hebrew and, and you read the word lion, and of course my, my Hebrew name is Arie, it, it, it just huh. reached out wow. and, and it became a whole much, much more personal. And then yesterday, you know, you, you, we went back into the Hafrutas. And at first I was really disappointed because I love hearing, you know, you talk and, and, and your impressions. But then I had this incredible experience, you know, um, with Debbie Metric and, 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 and Zarina. And as soon it was, as, it was, as, as it ended, this came to me. You know, it, it, it's like, the, the, you know, this is my fourth one and, and the other three all just happened. And, and I sat down and just and wrote this and, and there it was. And, and, and all these little pieces that, that we talked about sort of came together for me, yeah. Yeah. In, you know, as you can see in, in, in this thing. And, 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 and the one that, that, that you know, I'll, I'll talk about is, you know, when you talked about using, you know, translating the word straight for, for our, our, our prayer book, um, you, know, I, you know, for those of you who, who, don't, who don't know me, I, I got married when I was 23 to a woman um, in, in 1975. And, you know, and that was long before I really knew who I was. And, and I spent, and I was married for 25 years. And, and I spent that time, you know, sort of trying to be, you know, the, this, this person who I really wasn't. And, and there in um, Bernstein was her phrase, you know, trying and failing or failing to try. And, and, ah, wow. and here I am, yep. <laughs> you know, and, um, and then of course, um, the apple of, of, of your eye, um, I, I just, you know, I, that, that spoke to me because I knew I was never going to be the teacher's pet, that that was never who I was. And, and that's what it spoke to. And, um, and then comes um, the, 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 the word pride and, and, and the attack and, 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 and our enemies going against us. And it just brought the whole image of, of, of January 6th and, 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 and the Proud Boys and, um, and, 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 and that horror and ending with this image I have of these, oh, I'm gonna use the word Republicans, but they're not only Republicans who are um, benefiting from, from the horror of this, of this last year. The stock market has been going up. People are making a lot of money and, and, they, and their goals, I mean, in my view, is just to, just to make more money than even their grandchildren can spend. Yeah. So there I am. Wow. Well, I just love how personal you make it, but you also place it within the contemporary historical moment we're in very, very, very clearly, which is so powerful, right? We're, we're all becoming ourselves and emerging into our lives in the middle of, you know, such a far cop the time that it's hard to absorb it all. And your anger at God, fantastic. I love it, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alicia Fowler. Hello. Hello. Let me, um, I'm going to put it so that we can wow, see the whole thing. And then if you want me to zoom into any detail, let me know, Alicia. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so I did a different take. I really loved the Yehuda Levy, Halevi poem. And uh -huh. the, um, the last part specifically with the last verse of As for Me in Justice, I Behold Your Face take my fill wide awake of your image and just how, um, you know, the idea of we, how, how can somebody face the image of God and, and live and, um, and just the, the sort of spectacular nature and fantastical nature of that. So I wanted to do sort of a meditative graphic illustration. Wow. Without, and so it's not really meant to be read very easily, like the fonts uh -huh. are small or funky. Um, so the idea of being that you sort of fall into this plane of, of a different reality and a different spot with God. And um, that was sort of, you know, and then plays of, of shapes like triangle, pink triangles, of course, for sort of a gay uh, reference. Of course. Um, but a circle and, and triangle for different, 
different things like, you know, God is not a being among beings, but is still in relationship with us. So what might that feel like? And um, I also had fun translating the poem a little bit differently from um, the way the other rabbi had shared it. Uh -huh. so I, I realize there's a slight typo in mine, but I'll still read it out. Okay. Is, so Harold, you can scroll in a little to like the top. Um, awake my lover boy from your slumber. And when, I will, and when I awake, I will fill myself with your image. If in a dream you behold a man kissing your lips, I will reveal the meaning of your fantasy. So I wanted to play with it. Wow, as, we've got to send that to Ruben. He's going to love that. <laughs> so I wanted to play with lover boy just because I uh -huh. thought this could be a very 80s. I've been also watching the um, It's a Sin. So I'm feeling very inspired by sort of 80s gay um, and, you know, 80s kind of rock imagery right now. I don't now. even know it. I don't know what It's a Sin is. I've been uh, that's the pose. It's the HBO. Like it's, it's okay. It's okay. It, it, I'm sure it has problems. It's about the AIDS crisis, uh -huh. um, but from the UK perspective. From the what perspective? From from the UK. So uh -huh. so they were okay. trailing in terms of knowledge and um and just what it was like to not have, um you know a, an internet so that information yeah. is really not shared. Yeah. Wow. All right, so. So we wow. will make sure that everybody gets this file so that they can. Yeah, I'd love to be able together. to look at it more carefully. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, I hope, and these are all computer created images, right? Yep. This is yep. an, yeah, fantastic. So I love that we go from Dean's work with burning and to a computer, computer art. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. Judy Frank. Yes, a hard act to follow. Um, Adonai, please hear me. You know me by now. I do not lie. You have seen my mind and know that I try to hold my speech. I have always tried to be honest and straightforward. Please protect me from wicked people who surround me on the streets of New York. Please hide me from their sights. Some days I feel like I am a target. I'm uh -huh. yeah. walk slowly. Anyone can harm me. Rescue me from the sights of the wicked who do uh -huh due to their evil inclinations, would harm me just because they could. I pray that you will enable me to have grandchildren someday. I hope to behold your face or just be in your presence on your right side. Wow. You make that feeling of vulnerability so concrete and so tangible. Speak to us, Judy. Well, that's how I feel every time I think uh -huh. I should go out and get some exercise and just walk on the streets. And then I say to myself, oh my God, I'm so afraid somebody will try to attack me. You know, this is what I'm always thinking of because I walk slowly and I'm with a cane. And I didn't think I was old until a couple of weeks ago when I read somebody with an elderly woman was attacked. So I looked to see how old she was and she was one year younger than me. And I uh -huh. had to call myself as elderly before uh -huh. I um, Yeah. And then, well, I don't think he's elderly, but I happened to discover that I, Saul Zalkin and I were graduated the same year from Erasmus Hall High School. So that was- Did you know each other? Did you know each other? No, no, there were 1,701 uh -huh. kids in our class. So it's uh, unlikely we ever had- Isn't that Barbara Streisand's high school? Yes, yeah, that's Barbara. Uh -huh. See, I'm a good gay man. <laughs> Well, this is beautiful. I, you know, I, my first response to that was the issue of how many people in New York walk around without masks on. So that was my first. So it was a very layered that it, you felt it for other things too, was a kind of a revelation in the process of the psalm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it is beautiful. Beautiful. And uh, this thing about looking for some protection, for some sense of protection and vulnerability. Beautiful. Joan Friedman. Hey. Notice me, God. Pay attention. Here I am. You've done this before. You know who I am, even when I don't. Hide me from my impulses to make the same mistakes over and over again. Sweep me away from them. Shelter me in the shadow of your wings in your comforting darkness. Please guard my path as if, as if I were the very pupil of your eye, as if you would be faltering, your sight diminished by my flaws. 
let me see your light filling space, filling time in and around us all. Mm. Joan, just gorgeous. Notice me, God, pay attention. Such a beautiful leap from the, but the deepest meaning of that opening of the Psalm where we just ask to be noticed. We ask to be heard, we ask to be seen. And uh, you know who I am even when I don't. That's a very beautiful understanding of what bochen means in the probing, which Larry experienced only as a negative or the, you know, those uh, twilight zone aliens to imagine there's a gentleness to knowing who we are, even when we don't, uh, is a very different read on it. And that's the read I like to feel, especially on Yom Kippur, but so that's beautiful. So speak to us, tell us about writing this. Well, I was kind of forcing myself to do it because, um, I mean, usually the times that I do write, I, I feel like I'm kind of askew to whatever's going on in the poem where I'm kind of a raider going and picking out a couple of things and then trying to put them together. Um, and, but I usually know whether or not I want to do it. And this one, it, it was much more mixed trying, trying to figure it out. Um, and so some of it was going along with, in that way, with the poem. Uh -huh. And then, and then at the end, that one, I mean, the, the parts that matter to me are the things about hide me from my impulses, but that's obvious. The thing at the end about the vision of God, I was trying to figure out, well, what is that? You know, what would that actually mean to me to have a vision of God? And I was thinking it very literally in terms of what would it mean to me to, with my eyes, see God, you know, not metaphorically where God's image is in every person, but, but seeing. And, and the closest I could come was like to see the, the light of God that, uh, that's kind of always there. I rarely actually physically see it. But, but it's there, right? Um, like all around us and coming out of everybody. And uh, so I tried to capture that. Wow. I think it's ultimately what, what our experience of God is always just the light, right? It's just the flower. It's just the emanation. For me, the, it's the emanations. What, that's what we're gonna be able to experience since God has no image. So what we're looking for is the force in the universe that cares uh, and wants to be in relationship with us, leaves all these signs, so to speak. And the question is, can we accept them? And so, and I really love the as if structure because sometimes that's how we have to live in life, right? Let me do this as if I think it might be okay. Let me do this as if I'm a good person because I really deep down think I'm not. That as if please guard my path as if that's very, that's a very powerful structure, filling time in and around all of us. That's what it is. That's a very beautiful theology. Thank you, Joan. Yeah. I also want to say that the, the formatting got lost here. Oh no. So yeah. Oh no. Take it up with our senior TA. I know. So, I know. <laughs> so just, just, I, I wouldn't just for, um, well, you can work with Harold on making sure yeah. that you, you know what I will send it back to you. You, you will get yeah. this. You can send it to me as a PDF and I'll make sure that it's done right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I apologize. Dorothy Leyland, uh, you're up. Okay. Um, I need more time. I need more time to find my way to you more time to lay down my lamentations of injustices done to me, to seek justice for others. I need more time until I am so filled with gratitude that it flows endlessly from my lips to your ear. Have mercy on me that I may feel your presence. Have mercy on me that I may feel your comfort and love. May, that might be your microphone that's a little there's a little high buzz is that you Dorothy I'm not sure anyway um I love that this is both the title and the first line I need more time talk to us Dorothy that's very powerful so I need more time came from um, Bernstein I had a lot of difficulty relating to this uh to Psalm 17 
And the last interpretation I read was Bernstein. And when I read at the end of hers, I need more time. That's what spoke to me. Well, that's a great example of a psalm, the psalm as a whole. There, not every psalm is going to be the most powerful experience in your life, right? That's just the nature mm -hmm. of it. And not every time you read every psalm, one year, one psalm might be very meaningful. And three months later, you might say, yeah, you might remember when it was meaningful, but it doesn't. So that's part of the discipline of have developing a relationship with the Hillam is to hang in there. And then look, you hung in there enough to find one line of one particular translation, which spoke to you. That's right. so that's a great example of this. So tell us a little bit more about that line and what it means for you. Well, it means I need more time means uh, to me that I've, like so many other people, I've been on this journey and I feel like I'm getting closer. I feel like the journey is sort of paying off uh -huh. and I don't, I don't expect the journey to end and I'm finding ways to enjoy it being a journey. Uh-huh. Which could your 20 year old have self have said that? Absolutely not. Yep, that's so powerful. Beautiful. Thank you, Dorothy. I'm thrilled you're in the class. Thank you. Thank Linda you. Watskin will go next. Hold on. Linda? Mute. Uh, you're reading the uh, pre-copy, copyright uh, edition, copy, copy edition. Uh, it starts with an epigram. So I call on you now, knowing you will answer, and that's from Fisher. God time. You, me, we talk. First you, then me. I ask you how you're doing. And you tell me about you got a traffic ticket. I ask you if you can I ask if you can get it fixed. You answer about your Uncle Joe, who knows someone in the precinct near Katz's Belicatessen named Bernie. He's always got some cow blood on his apron. I ask you about your bunions, and if you cut a hole in your sneaker, like I told you, it don't hurt so much. You're a mensch, not like God. Too busy to answer when I ask. Four years ago, I asked a, a butch for my cousin daughter's Zipporah, the one who has acne. Did I, God answer? Not yet. God takes God time, could be years, until God gets to your letter. Maybe God's doing needlepoint for God's <laughs> favorite angel, a guy with a name twisted like a pretzel. You, me, we know about time. <laughs> fantastic, oh Linda. That's just fantastic. Oh. Speak to us. Love it. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> what started this out was I read the, the line, I call on you now, knowing you, and for whatever reason, I, I thought back about the, the, the stories about how God answers in his own time, her own time. And that sometimes we're we're pushing. Um, my I had been estranged from my daughter for thirty two years, and for thirty two years, I prayed every day that there be some contact. Thirty two years later, I had contact. God time, not my time. So that was sort of as I was thinking about it. That that's what came to my mind. Wow, well, it's beautiful and it uses humor and concrete language so beautifully. So it's a great, this is a great example of using what one might call as non-poetic poetry to create a very, very powerful poem. 
Wow. I like that. It if you all, cut a hole in your sneaker, like I told you, it don't hurt so much. That's just it also um, the the young woman who read at uh, Biden's inaugural. Yes. Uh, she she has and just that one reading changed the landscape of poetry. She has. Uh, allowed poetry to now include rap and a variety of other genres to it. And so that, that now enters the canon of acceptable poetry. So this, this sort of frees the rest of us up to, to just write the way we want to write. That's okay. beautiful. And of course, that's been happening for a long time now with young, yes. especially writers of color, but not only. And so it's fantastic that it looked that it wends its way to CBST's uh, Psalms class in this beautiful way. I'm so, that's so moving that Thank that's you. one of your inspirations right now, Linda. Thank Linda, you so much. Just read to me that epigram again. I call on you now knowing you, what, what did you read first? Or you can send it to me and I'll put it in, okay? All right, so we now go to uh, a little bit of goodness from uh, Michael Goldstein. Michael? Yeah, I'm here. Here we go. are. All right, this is my interpretation of Safaria with a little bit of Levy and some of the others that I read through. But uh, uh, I, Rabbi Kleinbaum, I always go back to what you've instructed us is to just use my own thoughts. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm interpreting the language okay. of Safaria. Okay, a prayer from David. Hear me world, listen to my honesty and truth. My confirmation will come from goodness observing my conduct in my sleep, goodness has examined my consciousness. I answered questions correctly. I will not speak falsehoods. Regarding human conduct, as goodness directs, I remember the results of wrongdoing. I follow the good. I do not stumble. I appeal to goodness. Listen to what I am saying. Show mercy. Save those who need protection from foes. Protect me as your child. Shield me in your arms from inter internal and external evils which ravage me, bad people who surround me. Their souls lack compassion. They speak propaganda. They surround us everywhere. They target expansively. Like a lion anxious to pounce, a king of beasts anticipating impending doom. Intercede, goodness. Counter the foe. Stop the enemy. Save me from evil within your judicial authority, from humans who live a short life. But feed those humans so their children will inherit your goodness. Mm -hmm. Consequently protected, I will see your countenance. Uh, consciously, I am supplied with the image of your goodness. Wonderful, Michael. We can I continue to love the goodness in these in the way you've printed it here, but talk to us about writing this one. Well, it's, it's a prayer asking uh, the good to intercede and to, to help me, the, the author, uh, uh, get through my fears and sufferings. And uh, even though there are lions, those bad people out there, uh, feed them so that their children will have goodness. Look, that's a very unique interpretation of that troubling or not so clear verse 14 to see it as let's hope that their children will survive long enough to be able to express goodness in the world where their parents or ancestors were evil. Very interesting. Exactly. Michael. Very, that, very creative. Yeah, that, that this pupil business, I thought the, uh, the child is the pupil of my eye. Uh -huh. that, that very nice. I saw the word pupil. Very, very nice. Save those who need protection from foes. It's as simple as that and as complicated as that, right? Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. Beautiful. Keep writing. All right, Rabbi, just one little word. Are yeah. you aware that you touch your face all the time? Am I aware? I, I touch my glasses all the time. No, no, no. You rub Wait, your Michael, 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 we, 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 we got to keep going. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll never get through these. 
Uh, all right, I'll I'll, the two of you can, I'll put the, I'll introduce. Introduce, yeah, write me an email. Offline, all right. So Donna. A prayer. Dear God, hear my prayer as I reach out to you. I am overwhelmed by the state of the world, traumatized by relentless visions of catastrophe. I close my eyes and see insurrectionists storming the Capitol, hospitals overrun with COVID patients, refugee children yanked from their mother's arms, Texans in the freezing cold lining up for clean water, fires and floods and blackouts, foretelling a climate change future that is already now. It's all too much, yet here we are. I try so hard to stay positive, mm. to have an attitude of gratitude, to remember that happiness is a muscle that needs to be exercised. I don't forget to laugh, but sometimes I can't help but cry. Oh God, my God, help me to stay present so I do not dissociate into numbness. Help me to feel the feelings that open the door to an open heart. Help me to embody a spirit that is spacious enough to glimpse a bigger picture far beyond what my limited ego can fathom alone. I'm so far from perfect. But you, omniscient presence, you know I keep trying. Have mercy on human foibles. Have mercy on me. I need a mega dose of <laughs> vitamin D sunshine. I know you can only help me when I help myself. May I have the humility to get out of my own way so I'll know that you're with me. On my own, I get lost in the darkness. Sheltered beneath your wings, I remember to turn on the light. Wow, Donna. And Donna, you're using, this is a great example of what I've said, that a word that we totally understand because we live in a psychologically oriented world. In a thousand years, somebody reading your psalm, the word disassociate, they might be able to translate it, but they will not be able to get the breadth of what we understand it to mean in our contemporary world. And so too, that's why there are so many words in the Bible that while we can kind of get at what their root might mean and what they mean, we can't at all understand what the writer meant by it because we don't have a living person from that moment who can tell us. So that word itself is a great example of what I was saying. So this is a very, very powerful Psalm and you've written many like this. The uh, It's all too much yet, here we are. That's kind of where with the summary, right? Tell us about writing it. So I had a lot of trouble with this one. Um, I just, you know, I sat with it for days and it kept changing. Um, the one, I, my way in was Stephen Mitchell. That was the one uh -huh. that spoke to me the most this time. And I used his beginning to get me started. And then I just forgot about it and, you know, let, just let my heart speak. Um, and yesterday in Hevruta, that was really wonderful um, for me and it changed it again. Uh -huh. talking about Bernstein and, you know, it, I, it, my psalm changed again after the Hevrut. Tell, just give us an example why or how or what? Um, well, remembering, um, um, you know, look, I can't see it now. Um, um, you know, like the, the part One second, about- Just a second, I have to sign off of this. It's Judy, you're, uh, we hear I'll your take care. I got her. Um, so, um, like the part about have mercy on, you know, about humanity and me, cause, um, um, she does that with, uh, about men yeah. and, and, and the personal I. Got it. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, just, you know, what, what it made sense to me was you know, like all of these horrible things that are happening in the world, how does one stay positive? You know, it's like, it's not so easy. It's, it takes. Yeah. And sometimes you can't and the best you can do is live, that's the reality of life, but here we are. It's all too much, yet here we are. Sometimes 
we can't be on the positive side, but we can say it's all too much yet. Here we are. That's beautiful. You know, right? so, so in these days, you know, like I, I've had a lot of pain about not being able to get a vaccine yeah. and I'm finally getting it today, but oh, you know, but, but it's like, there's just like everything that we're living through. It's like help. <laughs> yep. But anyway, that's yep. it. Wow. You've expressed the reality of where we are. We can't Pollyanna it ourselves to another place all the time. And so we go deeper and deeper and deeper, and that's a different kind of strength, and it's a different kind of comfort. Wow. Marilyn Greenberg. Marilyn, can you unmute yourself? Okay, thanks. Shema, listen, can you hear me crying out? From where will I receive my help? To whom can I pray? Whom can I trust? How will I find my way out of this? As I lay in this hospital bed after six months of five unsuccessful surgeries, today, lo and behold, to my utter surprise and dismay, my newer surgeon refused to do surgery number six. Even as I lay on the operating table under the cloak of anesthesia. We can't keep doing this. It doesn't work. The blockage is too big and our attempts to open the arteries do not hold. What? Even temporary relief would be better than none, I thought. Please, nameless one, protect me from losing my legs. Hear me, invisible one. Help me understand. I am angry waiting for the surgeon to reappear during this long night to offer a more satisfying explanation for his actions and an alternate course of treatment. He said he would come back, but he is nowhere in sight. How long can I wait? Give me strength, ease my pain, make my eyelids heavy enough for sleep, calm my anxiety, keep me from despair, Comfort my fears. Give me a reason to hope. Don't abandon me. Wow. Wow. Breathtaking, Marilyn. How long can I wait? Ad matai. We have throughout the Psalms, and that's a beautiful expression. How long can I wait? Ad matai. Give me strength. Ease my pain. Tell us. Speak to us, Marilyn. Um, it was Mitchell also who spoke to me. And it was about... Um, seeing the verses about the feet because I have a heart condition where my blood doesn't get from my heart to my legs. So uh -huh. when you like guide my feet on your path, don't let me stop or falter. It just took me back to that, to that time. Uh -huh. and, I, and also his line about being overwhelmed by troubles and terrified by thoughts. So it just took me back then. Wow. That moment. So how did it feel writing this down in this, some poems structure how did it feel for you to do this um did it come easily was it hard once i decided to do it it came easily uh-huh beautiful and beautiful. i wasn't sure i wanted to send it or read it uh-huh well i'm really glad you did marilyn is honesty honesty and authenticity that's what makes a psalm powerful is this your first time reading a psalm in class Yes. Wow. So we get to say Shechianu Baruch Ata Adonai Elohim Melchalam Shechianu Vikiyamanu Vihigianu Lazman Hazeh Mazel Tov Welcome to the group of Psalm writers. Thank you. And creators, I should say, creators, because not everything is in a written word form. So I think with that very powerful uh, offering, it is uh, time to wrap up today. Thank you, everybody. And thank you everybody who came to the town hall last night. Thank you again to Regina Linder and to our vaccine uh, angels. And if anybody needs help getting a, an appointment, write to Judy Ribnick, jribnick at cbst.org. And she is working with people to uh, buddy up with one of our vaccine angels to help, help you get an appointment. And good luck today, Donna. We're thrilled you're getting an appointment. And I think that um, Darina said she got her shot. Oh, great, Darina. Fantastic.
Fantastic. Yes, yeah, I came right back into Wonderful. sound class. All right. All right, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. -bye,